Everybody likes a little handy dandy. And I'm telling you, the little Sanwa AP33 is definitely handy. Big shout out to Sanwa and SanwaAmerica.com. Thanks so much for sending it in for this review. Sanwa. Today we're looking at the shockingly good AP33 from Sanwa. This handy little pocket meter does a lot. Well, okay, it's not feature packed per se, but man, what it does, it does really well. It comes in that bubble wrap enclosure, which actually has a spinning image of the real meter. Oh, I just like it. You know, that way if you lose your meter, well, you still got one. Not really, I know, silly. As always, Sanwa does a really good job on the manual itself. English on one side, Japanese on the other, and it goes into every single testing scenario you can imagine that your AP33 can do. Hey, and speaking of what the Sanwa can do, it does DC voltage up to 500 volts DC, AC voltage as well up to 500 volts, DC current up to 250 milliamps, so low current only, and resistance. Uh, also has a nifty little battery tester as well that puts a little load to check your 1.5 or 9 volt battery. And make no mistake about it, this is definitely a small meter compared to that YX360 TRF. Yeah, it's about literally half the size. But pocketability is a good thing. And you know what, you can put this in your shirt pocket, in your coat pocket, just don't sit on it. It's definitely easy to take with you. Another night feature is that bumper we have on the exterior. So it doesn't have a complete protective boot, but it has a protective bumper, which you know what? It's basically the same thing, isn't it? And it's good. I mean, not only that, it acts as a storage mechanism for those test leads, but I like this idea. I like it. And speaking of Sanwa test leads, check that out. Gold tipped. Oh, I love my Sanwa test leads. Always have. Yeah, they are some of the best in the biz. Definitely high quality. The only caveat with the test leads are, is the fact that, look at that, it terminates at the top of the meter instead of the bottom. So whenever you're making a measurement, you've always got this sort of hanging from the top, which is just a little weird. I would have preferred it really to be at the bottom, but you know what, hey, it's not really a big deal. Okay, what we're gonna do first of all is make sure that that needle is where it's supposed to be. And to do that is really simple. Just take the test leads and you're gonna put them together. You're gonna to short them out. And we want it to be right on the zero. Now, now we have no parallax mirror here on the meter, but we can still see that that is definitely not resting on the zero. So we can easily adjust that by using the ohms adjust. So I will short them again and make sure now that we can just fine tweak it like so. And let's try one more time now that we've adjusted that needle and perfecto. As well, you wanna make sure it also is resting on infinity right over there. And yes, it is. If the needle does not rest on infinity, once again, really simple. Here, take your screwdriver and just gently put, turn it until the needle is on the infinity marker. That's it, that's all. Once you've done both of those things, your analog meter is ready for action. The gauge of the wire is thin, about 2.2, 2.3 millimeters compared to a regular, say 3.5 to 4 millimeter for a standard test lead. So it's thin, but then again, it kind of has. And just making sure we are good still. Yes, right on the zero. Do three measurements here, starting off with 100 ohm. And yeah, right on the 100 marker. Let's try 10 ohm, yes. And finally, one ohm. Beauty. Five volts DC, perfecto. Finally looking at low current with 100 milliamp output. And look at that, looking good once again. I couldn't resist, I just had to put these two together and look at that, it's still smaller than the tiny Sanwa clamp, the, uh, wow, 
the PM33A. So yeah, this thing is definitely small. Finally, we're gonna take a look at that battery functionality at the battery testing mode for both 1.5 or nine volt batteries. Kind of cool. So I'm looking at the specs right now. And as you can see, um, for AC-DC volts, we have two kilo ohm of impedance uh, per volt. Uh, compare that to the battery where we've got 14 ohms and 420 ohms respectively. So quite a difference. Yeah. So what does that mean? Well, it means that you're gonna get a true indicator of whether or not that battery is actually good. So how does a battery do when you're just testing it and how does it do under load? Let's find out. I've got the meter set into the 10 volts DC position. Let's take a look and see what it says in terms of battery life. And look at that, it's it's reading pretty good. Now you think, okay, well, maybe I can get away with eight volts, right? It's not six, not five. Well, let's put this onto the nine volt testing mode. And you can see unequivocally here, we have a bad battery. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. So the battery testing functionality is nice. It does put that load on and all things considered, it's a pretty cool feature. Only caveat with this is the fact that it will probably eat up some of the internal battery on the meter just because that input uh, impedance is so high. How'd you like to win a brand new Samwell Multimeter? Well, of course you would, silly. And I'm gonna give one away. Draw will be held on May 25th. Anybody with a comment below automatically gets entered to win. Oh, and one other thing, of course, you gotta be a subscriber. Anybody, anywhere in the world, your chance to win free Sanwa. Can't go wrong with that, can we? No tilt stand on this meter. It will be permanently lying on its backside. I'm not even gonna go there with any jokes. Uh, Tokyo, Japan is what is uh, being highlighted here. Uh, this is actually made though in Taiwan, not Japan, but nonetheless under a Japanese uh, Sanwa facility. So uh, top notch quality. And hey, if you have a 3D printer, it's so simple to print a stand for your meter uh, anywhere, uh, 3D printables, you name it. Hey, if you're into 3D printing, let me know. I might be doing a couple of 3D printer reviews in the not too distant future. But yeah, look at that. Awesome, isn't it? Beauty. And by the way, when you're wrapping up those test leads, when you're done for the day, um, take note, if you can see, there is a groove here, a notch embedded. And that is where that part of the test lead goes into. Yeah, excellent engineering here as always. All right, here we go, taking a look at the inside now. Man, oh man, what do you notice? Yes, this is all through hole components. Holy moly, check it out. Haven't seen that in a while. A bevy of resistors, capacitors, what have you, on this tiny but thick little PCB. Wow, check it out. Now, no, not a whole lot in the terms of input protection, that's for sure, but uh, well, you know, this is once again designed for low voltage, low current. Now, if you take a look over there, what do we see? That's a fuse, 250 volt, 500 milliamp fuse. And on top of that, we have our coil, uh, which is covered. It's a moving coil of the pivot type. So Sanwa has implemented a pivot type coil for this meter. Just above the coil head is the battery uh, inlay. And we have room for two, but we only need one. One AAA battery is all it takes. So a design for two and used with one. Go figure. Once again, we have a really good strain relief on that battery. Check it out. A uh, little bit of a twist tie going on there. Definitely going to hold it for the long term. Don't have to worry about wear and tear over the long run. Uh, there's no wear and tear on this uh, test lead whatsoever, the way it's being held in there with that little twist tie. So, yeah, good attention to detail as always. It's the little things that can really mean a lot. And here we are a little bit closer and look at that. 250 volt, 500 milliamp glass fuse. The one thing I'm not seeing, which I wish I was, uh, is some sort of a brass or threaded insert for the uh, assembly, because you're gonna have to get in here to change that battery and the fuse. And look, we don't have any brass inserts. Uh. Alrighty, gonna put everything back together, come back with my closing thoughts. 
Closing thoughts on the Samwa AP33 Multi-Tester. The little mini that could and would and will. Something like that. Yes, yes, and yes. This one is a keeper. Small but powerful. It does a lot and it's so easy to take with you. Plus, it's built like a rock. That rugged outer lay uh, rubber protector, whatever, really makes a big difference. Gorgeous looking display as well. I mean, some analog meters are absolutely horrendous to look at. Not so with the AP33. This one is very, very easy on the eyes. Has a couple of caveats. Yeah, a tilt stand would have been good, but at the end of the day, it's always better to look at an analog meter reading when it is sitting itself flat. It's the laws of gravity. But that being said, uh, there's not much to gripe about. This is not an expensive meter. Depending on the time, it could be 49 to 59 or so US dollars. Hey, that is a steal as far as I'm concerned. No, you're definitely getting a lot for your money. The Sanwa AP33 Multitester gets a solid four out of five stars. Oh, I love this tester. It is shockingly good. Thanks for watching this review, everybody. Till the next one. Keep on testing.